Welcome to The Gathering. I am Brittany. Felicia. And we are missing Janelle. She has taken some time to focus on family. She's on maternity leave. We miss her. We can't wait for her to rejoin us physically, but she is always here in spirit. We love you now and we just hope that everything is going well as you embark on your new journey of motherhood. Yes, as we say every week, like we definitely miss her. We can't wait till she comes back, but we want her to take all the time that she needs while she's spending time with her family. But we also want you guys to be a part of our family. So if you have not, please, while you're here today, subscribe, like, share this video with your friends and family. We welcome all of your comments and all of your ideas and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload from us. Absolutely. We want you to do all the things so that you are always up to date on what we have going on here on our gathering YouTube. Today we will be talking about something that is very important. It is Self-Harm Awareness Month. It is observed in March throughout the United States and it is a very important topic that we knew that we had to take some time to discuss today. Self-Harm takes on many different titles. So self-harm, self-injurious behavior, non-suicidal self-injurious behavior are all some of the names that one could use if they're describing the action itself. But it basically all boils down to intentionally inflicting harm upon oneself. Mm -hmm. It's also incredibly prevalent. Over 2 million cases of self-injurious behavior are reported a year, and it is the second leading cause of death among individuals 18 to 24. So unfortunately, it's happening during a very vulnerable time in the person's life when so much is happening. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an issue that we wanted to bring awareness to and that we definitely had to bring to you guys because it's something that parents and friends, co-workers and everyone else should be aware of. Absolutely. The most vulnerable population that are reported to engage in self-injurious behavior are between the ages of 12 and 24. And 38% of those within that population report that self-injurious behavior is something that they've learned from their peers. So a peer will engage in the behavior and the other parties will learn about it and then it's something that they will then try themselves for a number of reasons. Oftentimes, self-interest behavior, we automatically connect it to like cutting, which is absolutely self-interest behavior, but there are so many other things that one can engage in if they are intentionally inflicting pain upon themselves. So it can look like cutting, it can look like scratching, biting, picking of one's hair, so that could be their eyelashes, that could be eyebrows, that could be the hair on their head, anywhere that they have body hair, picking of hair. It could be banging one's head or other body parts of, against like hard surfaces, burning. There are just so many different things that one could do to inflict pain and all of that is considered self-injurious behavior. It's important now that we know what non-suicidal self-injurious behavior is, it's important to also know when it's not. I do believe that sometimes it is, mis it is very much so misunderstood and that often people think that A, it is an act of suicide or an intention of suicide, but it's something that can occur together, but it's all it also can occur as a very separate act. It's often thought of as attention seeking and also that's not what it is. Self-injurious behavior can, uh, it's often seen as a way to promote control over one's emotions. It can also be an outward, an outward expression to escape the numbness that often comes with depression. And I know just kind of in my own work, when I have worked with people 
who have kind of performed these types of behaviors, they often said that a it was in a way attention seeking, but it was a cry for help. They wanted their parents to find out, or they wanted a school officials to find out. Like they almost wanted them to see it, just so someone could intervene, because they did not know how to express the feelings of anxiety or the feelings of depression. So often that this is a symptom of a larger problem that needs intervention pretty quickly because even though it is not necessarily an act of suicide it is something that kind of accidentally can lead to a bigger issue or can accidentally lead to death because of a cut too deeply or burn that is kind of too bad or something like that. So it is something to where it is important that, and we're gonna kind of talk about a little bit later, it's important that parents, friends, everyone kind of heed the warning signs just because if continued, it is something that can lead to a bigger, a bigger issue or more dangerous issue. Absolutely. The reason why someone would engage in self-injurious behavior is very unique to their own circumstance. So like Quelly said, it could be connected to a much larger issue, so depressive symptoms or anxious symptoms. Sometimes people, like she explained, want to convey their their turmoil, but just don't know how to put it into words, and so they want someone to see it. Others try to hide it and conceal it because that's the only way they, they know how to release some of that those feelings. But they want it to be a secret. So the function of it can be very different. And that's why knowing what to look for and then knowing how to intervene is gonna be really important. So we wanna take some time to help loved ones know what to look for to at least start the conversation. So you can look for unexplained wounds. So that could be cuts, that could be scratches. We have burns bruises that just can't be explained away. Those are That's one of the signs that something happened to your loved one and it may prompt more of a conversation. Blood stained sheets, clothing, and towels. So seeing if you're changing linen or if you're doing the laundry and you see that there's blood there, it's important to have that conversation openly, not accusatory, but trying to figure out what happened here that has now resulted in blood being in items. We also want to look for inappropriate clothing in different situations where one would not suspect that type of clothing to be worn. So if you're wearing long sleeves or turtlenecks or long pants in the middle of the summer or to the swimming pool or something like that, intentionally trying to cover up these wounds, that may be an indication that some further exploration is warranted. If you are in gym class and you are refusing, your child is refusing to change clothes. It could be so many different things, so we don't want you to automatically assume that it's self-interest behavior, but it is something that you probably want to talk to your child about just to see what is the root of that behavior. Any any others you want to share, Corley? Um, no, I think that you, you covered most of them. Just kind of just being attentive to your child. And if you notice that something seems a bit off, definitely directly address it, but don't necessarily address the symptomology of it. Try to go a little deeper and figure out kind of what might be the root of what's happening and intervene as quickly as you can. Absolutely. If you were to pick up on any of the things that we just mentioned, the first thing that we want you to do is try your best to remain calm and not panic. Situations like this, should be addressed in a supportive nature. So like we've mentioned, we don't wanna be accusatory. We wanna have really open, honest, transparent conversation with our loved ones. We wanna explore the, the, the symptomology. We wanna see what's going on. We wanna see what's happening. So we don't wanna uh, assume that you are engaging in behaviors if you're not. But if you are, then we wanna go a little bit deeper to figure out why. So we want to prompt you to have really open, honest, but supportive conversation. We want to encourage you to safety-proof your home, for lack of better words. But we want you to make sure that lethal means stay as far away from your loved ones as possible. If you happen to be helping cleaning up your child's room or your loved one's room, because it's not just children, you happen to see 
sharp objects or lighters or anything that could cause them harm kind of hidden out of the way and it looks like it's intentional have a conversation ask them about that but then you also want to make sure that you're putting them in a place that is not easily accessible because we don't want to give them increased access to these tools that could hurt them agreed um, i would also add if you kind of hear about this happening at your child's school or, or even on university campus if you have kids at, in college, just kind of address that directly because what we find is that it does often influence a lot of times by peers, just as many other things are. So if you hear that it is occurring or that there have been incidences where your child is, then I think whether you have any evidence that it's happening or not, I think that don't just assume it's not happening to your child. I think that that is a good opportunity to have to open up that that dialogue, just to kind of ask if they know anyone who's doing it, if they ever thought about it, and they may feel comfortable sharing that. They may not, but I feel like just the fact that you brought it up means that you are concerned and that you care and that if something was happening that you guys are able to talk about it in a calm manner and it's not like a panicky situation to where you guys can have an honest open dialogue so um just anytime things like that happen around them it's always a good opportunity to just start the talk start the talk and if you're not comfortable with starting the talk there are trained professionals that are ever ready to start the talk for you in conjunction with you. So we would encourage you to reach out to therapists, to crisis hotlines, to get some support from trained professionals because there are individuals that specialize in supporting a population, this population of the person that is inflicting the harm, but also their support systems. So if you are not comfortable, if you don't know what to do in the moment, we wanna let you know that it's okay. We want you to know that you're not always gonna be equipped with the tools in the moment, but there's somewhere that you can go to learn more about how to intervene. So calling a local crisis line, like we mentioned, or speaking with a local therapist can help give you some direction when it comes to having these conversations. We'll be sure to link some general resources that anybody can use across wherever you're living, um, wherever you're gathering with us from, you'll make sure that you have some resources. And then we will encourage you to also seek some local interventions so that you have ongoing support. Yes, we will definitely provide you guys with some resources below. As always, we welcome any other feedback. If you guys have any other things that you want to share with us, any other resources that you want to provide that everyone can utilize, feel free to drop in our comments and let us know what's available in your specific areas to help us bring more awareness to this issue. Because like, like we said earlier, it is happening to a very vulnerable population at a vulnerable period in their life. And I know parents are confused and they are panicked and they're unsure. Of, of, of what to do because it is hard to know the difference like is my child trying to commit suicide or is this a symptom of something larger that's happening it's hard to know it's hard to tell and so we want to make it easier for everyone by talking about it like we said starting the talk having a place to begin and that's that's kind of the most important reason why we wanted to get this video to you guys absolutely we want you to know that we're gathering with you as you have these maybe tough conversations. We are here to support in any way. So please feel free to reach out to us if there is something that we can help you with. Or if you have other ideas for videos, you know, let us know that too. If you visit our Instagram page, which will definitely be linked below. We have an email address there so you can shoot us information and we'll get back to you as far as additional content and if resources are needed. But until next time, we hope that you are staying safe and well, and we will see you in our next video. Bye. Yay.